Dave here. How are you? Today is the 10th of October 2021. I trust the sound is coming through nice and clear that I have remembered to turn the microphone on and the AV is all looking good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much for that. All right. I hope everyone's had a good week and uh, in New South Wales we're sailing ahead with a double dose of the old jab. I'm done so I can go back to work and have a great time. All right, enough of that. We're going today to continue on with the build that we started last week with the exotic, but I'm gonna focus on this little guy here, which is what we're going to make today. This is a lovely little hand plane, and I'm gonna make it out of recycled timber. You can see this is just made from a pallet. Lots of people make things from pallets. Well, I thought I'd have a go at it. Now, the pallet wood I'm using is this. I think it's Merbau. This is, uh, you can see where it was, this was the part on the ground. These were the slats of the pallet going across. And I'm actually going to be using one of the slats that went across. And they're not really very pretty to look at. You can see they've got a fair bow in them. Um, they're rough sawn, nail holes. And for me, it's going to add character. Now. Uh, let me see how we're doing down the side here. Everyone's there. Good morning. G'day from Terranora. Kerry Blue. Where's Terranora? Um, Nathaniel, g'day. Harry, how are you? First of all, we're going to go over to the Capex and I'm going to dock this. Now, these planes you can make with hand tools. I'm going to kind of mix it up a little bit. I'm going to use the um, the drop saw. I am going to use my planer thickness machine. I'm also going to use my hand planes here and I have sharpened them up during the week. You may have seen I did a little post because I was struggling pushing them through. You know what it's like? You think, oh yeah, it's still sharp. It's sharp. No, keep on keeping these things tuned and they will look after you. You want to see how well they're tuned? Watch this. Give me a second. This is my number, number seven turner. Now I'm going through end grain. There's a domino in there as well. And have a look at this. Oh, this one looks prettier. <laughs> That's the end grain that it was going through. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give all of them a little bit of a run later on in the show. Okay. Over to the capex, and we're going to dock these. I'm gonna show, oh before I do, I stop a lot, don't I? When you're cutting things on a drop saw, it's very important that you have the bow, so the convex side, facing back towards the fence. And if it's got a dip this way as well, like this way on the, on the large, on the face, have that down on the table. Do not put the convex side against the fence, because as you cut, it's going to pull it against the fence right at the end and jam and catch. Same as it's coming down, if it's humping like this, no good. You have to do it this way. It's the opposite on a jointer, but on this, very, very important. So I'm going to dock both of these because I don't need all of that length. Bit of a bow in it, it's going to waste time and waste timber because you're going to have to keep on planing and planing and planing to get rid of the bow out of a long piece. You halve it if you go to the short piece. So I shall swing it around morning Michael morning Rob morning Joe and everyone else there uh, camera three and you can see I've got it set up here all right I'm gonna sight down there I've got a I've got a bow this way and this way this is the way it's got to go in you can see it's it's doing this that's good so I'm cutting that to around about here. Those black marks are from where I was doing some painting. Um, I'm going to make some noise, so watch your ears there. Now, I did have it set to trenching, so I'm going to raise that up and it'll go all the way through now. Wait for it to stop. Shift that out of the way. That's the piece I'm going to use. And on this one, 
looking at where the bow is, that's the wrong way. See, it's not rocking at all. Now it is. And this one up against the fence, that side, and that will do me. Got to be careful with this kind of stuff. Cool. All right. Two pieces. I'm going to take them over to the jointer. Come back over here. Going to move the camera in a second. And have a quick read. Brian, Greg, Michael, how are you? Bring this over here. Going to quickly check that that camera's okay. Yeah, it's fine. All right, I'm going to stay down there with that camera for a little bit. And I guess I really should put some eye protection on as well. And wouldn't you know it, I haven't got it anywhere around me. Give me a second. Was the only thing I didn't get prepared. And it's not out there either. Great. I don't know where I put it. I will go with earmuffs to start. Oh, it is a bit embarrassing. It's going to slow the project down. Look, if I go over time today, you know, so be it. Found it though, right beside me. Why didn't you guys tell me? <laughs> Give it up just a touch. About there, I'm guessing. Cool. All right. Now, the same kind of thing as I was just doing then, I'm going to have a look down to see where the bow is. And it's that way up and that way up. I've got a couple of staples there. Better pull those out. They don't like going through the machine. That's something to watch for when you're um, when you're getting using pallet wood. Look out for staples because normally they put staples around the outside to hold onto plastic when things are delivered. And the other thing to look out for, of course, are actual nails in the wood. I would have run my metal detector over it if I had it here at the moment. Looking down there again, this isn't too bad. That's the hump there. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to take a millimeter. That'll do me. And another millimeter. There we go. From pallet wood. So nice and clean. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this nice and square. My fence is perfectly square. I've already set that up. This guy's here for this one because I'm down closer to the blade. may hear that it's just caught there. So I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to go again because what's happened is it had a hump and so as it's traveling along that hump is pushed down into it. It'll go clean this time. You see that part in the center and again one more time with this large base up against the fence so I get a perfectly square edge. Turn her off. And there you go. That is perfectly square. 
it's decent timber. You know, it's not good enough for what uh, the people wanted to have the specific timber to be used for, but it's good enough for what we want to do. Now I'm going to run it through the thicknesser. The blades have stopped turning. I'll push the guard back. Flip her over. And wind her up. Oh, I haven't done that one. Why didn't you tell me, guys? Come on. Okay, so this one's got to be done as well. Checking for hump. Yep. There. Make sure that my push block can get through as well. Now some people might say, Dave, why aren't you raising this up and pushing this under the guard? Because honestly, I find it's a little bit more dangerous trying to control it from both sides. I prefer to have pressure right over it so that as I'm going through, I'm in control. I'm not trying to have that area as no man's land. It's just me. You do what you feel is the safest. I'm not going to tell you to do one way or the other, but this is how I like to do it. There. Go again. One more pass and you should be right. Beautiful. Now sideways, again to create that square edge. Push this back in a little further. There we go. Again, nice and square, straight away. Push that back. Now I can flip her over. Okay. Let's have a look at this. It's reading around about 44. I'm watching here, bring it up to there. And then I can look down on the dial here. Let's have a look at that, see how it goes. That's good enough for what I'm after. I'm not going to dress this side. I'm going to cut this down anyway. That's pretty good there. We'll clean this one up. And this one is going to be around 20. Actually, it's going to be closer to 18. Just looking at it. Let's see how that goes. That's going to do for what I want. There we go. Back up the other end. The 
dust will turn itself off in a second. Um, morning, Cole. Wayne, how are you? Uh, just reading through. Second Pfizer jab. Excellent. All good. Um, body aches, kidney pain, migraine, 24 hours sleep, peaked at 39.2. Ah, well, it affects different people, different ways. I went to AstraZeneca uh, and I was a little bit tired the day after and that was about it. Okay, but now I feel great. Now, the next thing we want to do, now that we've got it to that stage, is I'm going to tell you what I did and that is on the, we're going to skip ahead. I've already prepared stuff as we're going. That's how we're going to do it in an hour. We've got 45 minutes left. <laughs> um, I ripped it down the center, split this open. Now, this particular one, instead of using a brass dowel across to retain the, um, the lever cap or whatever you want to call it, that locks the blade in position or any other way of doing it, we're going to use a wedge like they did in the old days. So I've already started on this one. Now you can see this has been split down the middle, opened up. I'm going to cut it down to width and all that kind of stuff later on. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, I wanted a 45, a 45 degree angle here on the base for the blade rest. And I want seven degrees more for the actual uh, wedge to go in. So we've got uh, 7 degrees and 45, uh, let me see, I think we're actually gone the other way. We're going down to 37, <laughs> 45 down to 37. I think that's right. Sometimes when you look at it like this, you think, oh, well, it could be a Japanese style plane where the blade is at the back instead of at the front. See, with mine, the blade's up near the front. With Japanese blades, or planes are at the back, and that's because Japanese tend to pull the plane towards them, not push like us. They're using their biceps to pull it through. We're using triceps to push it away from us. Just an interesting thing. Um, okay, now over to here, and we're going to. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this part. This is six millimeters, or you know, six point three five millimeters, quarter inch thick. That's all there is to it. Get that camera. We're not going to use the jointer anymore for the moment. You're going to see how that camera looks. Camera three. Yeah, not bad. Your father had the AstraZeneca, fell asleep for a day. Yep. All right. Back over here. Now, I'm using this stop for a couple of reasons. I'm going to swing it around to 45. Now, if I didn't have this here, when I do my cut, I'll just lock that in position. If I didn't have that there, when I set the saw up to trenching, this, this green lever here, which means the saw can't go all the way down, I've set it to that height. It's very easy. You just turn this and it raises or lowers the bottom, bottoming out point of the blade. But have a look back here. I'll use something to point so I'm not actually putting my fingers there right on the blade because <laughs> people get a bit scared. Okay, I've got the saw all the way back. So the bottom is in line with the axle of where the blade rotates, the arbor. So that's at the depth that it wants to be. But back here, that's as far back as I can go with the saw. I'd have a big bloody bump there. So I want the bottom of my slots in these guys to be full depth of, of the slot. So I'm doing about a three millimeter deep slot. So that's how it works. So I've got it set at 45. And I've already done a 45, so I'm going to move it around to, we're going back from 45 around to zero. So we're going to go to 44, unlock it, and rather than have my fingers down here near the blade, which is starting to get a little bit dangerous, I'm going to use the million dollar stick, or the 10 million dollar stick. All right, and I'm making sure at the back, let me see here, 
at the back point here that I'm going to still be in the line. See, this is showing me where the cut is going to be. I can turn the lasers on, but there's no need. This is back a little bit. Um, I could sneak it along, which I might. So it's just going to help with me lining things up. There we go. So I can now when I line up to this point there, I know that I'm not going to be, you know, going outside and coming this side. This has all got to stay clean. This is the waste down the middle that I have to remove. That area's got to go. And this is the quickest way that I know how to do it. I'll throw the protection on again. And hold it. So I'm going to make some noise for a little while. And I need to just drop that down ever so slightly. Do it again. I hadn't pushed down hard enough. That's what it was, I think. Go another degree. Another degree. This is the absolute easiest way to do it. I am going to use a router plane in a minute to finish it off. Okay, now I'm going to use the router plane over here. And I don't have a slick router plane. I've got one of my great grandfather's router planes. This is also known as an old hag's tooth. Uh, let me see if the overhead cal cam works. There we go. I'm down in this corner. The focus isn't great in this corner. But uh, here we go. I'm going to stick to the left-hand side as I'm going this direction up against this edge. I'm not going to have the router plane faced um, straight away there. I'll tell you what, it might be nice to have that other camera on it. So I can put that right on there and you can see exactly where I'm at. This might be better. Yep, that is, that's going to be a whole lot better. Okay, so the router plane, as I'm pushing, I'm not going to have it kind of facing in towards the edge here at all. I'm going to have it so it's running parallel or slightly away. So the blade, the, not the sharp part of the blade, is going to be butting up against that. I've got two stops in here so it can't go anywhere. I'm going to turn it around and possibly move that out of the way, slide it down to there and put that there like that. I just want to do this part here. The reason it's being a little bit awkward is I think when I've moved 
the um, the point. There we go. When I moved the when I <laughs> get down here when I put the little stop on the capex down I, I and up and down you do tend to it will turn the episode slightly so I should have actually just dropped it back down a little bit but what I'm going to do now is get a chisel and just finish that off now I sharpened all the chisels up during the week as well as the planes and I'll go with a little quarter inch Lovely. All right. Done. Back down to there. And yes, Dave, it's one of Arthur's. It's one of Arthur's planes. All right. So now I have my left and right area for the wedge to go into. All right. So then. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Now this piece of wood here that we dressed up, let's say that I've gone over to the capex and I've cut it down to this, which is a 45 degree. This is for the plain bed. This is for the plain blade to sit on. And this is for the escapement. So there is a little line on there. So we'll go over to the bandsaw and cut that off and we'll tidy it up and we'll get to the next stage. 25 minutes in. I think we're doing okay. Move this camera around again. All right. I'm cheating a little bit because I've done some preparation. Otherwise, we waited for glue to dry and all these other parts. It would have taken forever. Coal's gone. Okay. All right. Over to the bandsaw. And we'll cut this piece out. Now, it's not, not the ideal blade. This is my resaw blade. But I'm going to just take it easily. I'm going to nibble it away through there. That's my piece. That'll stop in a second. I'll bring you over to here. And we'll start this guy up. Just want to clean the end of this up. Now, don't be tempted to start from the top and work down because it'll grab it and flip it up like that. I start at the midpoint about halfway up. That's if you use if you're using the nose like I am on the sander. Now I'm going to I've turned it upside down. You notice there, so I'm going to be working on this side now. And again the other side. A little bit more. Done. That's the escape. Back here. So now we have that 
and that. So this is the escapement for the shavings to escape. This is for the plane blade to sit on. And then we have both the sides. Bring them over as well. Just pop the turner down there. Like so. So you can see the checkout or the dado that we've created for the blade and the wedge to go down there line up perfectly with the blade rest. This will go, <laughs> this will go in there like that. Okay. Now, rather than, again, rather than me waste time and glue, I've already done it. So this is the next step. It's been glued together and I've cut it down on the bandsaw. I use this. This hasn't been planed off or anything. We're going to do this now. Uh, let me see. Let's move that and that out of the way. So we got anyone watching still? Let's move these two. Okay, here's our plain body and grain direction is kind of straight on this. We'll see how it goes when we actually start working it. This camera over here, why not? This is where we're going to go to a little bit of hand tool work. All right. Um, curious to see how that's going to look. No, I think we better go to, go to that one. Actually, let's bring it down and tip it up a little and come in. That looks a bit better. Okay, now I'm going to use the number seven. Okay, here we go. I'm just cleaning off the base and getting rid of the glue. I'm going to hit it with a bit of speed. This is where I'm using the mass of the plane to help me through. Look at that. That's just a joy. I still got a little bit of to come off here. Nearly there. That's so close. One more. Gotcha. There we go. Look at the shine on that after a sharp blade. That's off the jointer and off the jointer and that's off the hand plane. There's such a difference. David, Lucy, off to the corner. Um, okay, Wayne, I was just thinking the same thing. When you guys, hold on, Dave, Wayne, Michael. So what did Michael say? Yep, okay. Here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I don't want this plane to be this tall. It's, you know, well, after I built this one, I thought, yeah, that's fine. But you notice there's only a little bit of the blade sticking out. So I want the blade to be up higher and the wedge and everything to be up higher so I've got more control. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rip it down to possibly two inches instead of two and a half inches tall. So it's going to be 50 mil instead of 63. Come back over here. And up a little. And I have to raise the blade guard up. So it can, so this can get under it. Actually, if it's only two inches, I don't know if I have to go all the way. There's 50 millimeters right there. So that, that's going to be okay. <laughs> the adjuster is only just clearing it. So I can lower this down again. 
to the thickness. It's always a good idea to keep it down low. So you can see how much I'm going to take off. And we'll lock it there. And put the specs back on. Uh, what do I need here? I want a couple of sticks to push it through. I don't want to have my hands too close. I did have a couple here. Are they on the table? Yes, they are. So basically, these are just little bits of stick that I'm going to use to help guide it through because I don't want to get my hands down in here. So I will be doing this. All right, turn it on again. I'll get it started by, by hand. Hold in there and use a push stick to go through. Off. There we go. Come back over here. We've got 25 minutes left. We're going great. Now, that is a whole lot easier to create that section by sandwiching. If you look at the old books, they say to get one big piece of timber and chisel it all out. Oh, man, oh, man, that's a lot of work. So, now I'm going to give this a quick uh, plane across the top. See if we can tidy that up. And then we'll dock it off again on the capex. Now, to do this, here's this one. My suggestion is, if you're going to do this, make a few, like I'm doing a few at once. And then you can put all different so sorts of blades. You can make them long, you can make them short, tall. Yeah. It's fun. That one there. Um, that one there. And I can put that there. Actually, I'm going to put this one in front on this side. And this one here. And this guy. Now use this to hold it. It's not too... Um, do too much other than to hold it so it doesn't the back doesn't lift up so I tension these show me, so you can see what's happening here so I push down on this and lift the front up while I hit that clamp and that grabs it a little bit better than ordinarily so let's see how this goes pull this out of the way and pull that one out of the way Shall I go to the number seven or should I try my big fellow? Let's give this one a try. Going against the grain slightly there. Spin him around. Let's see how that goes. Still doing a decent job. Oh, that feels better. a bit nicer, doesn't it? See, so it's not all about power tools. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the wedge. Um, yes, exactly right, Russell. I want, I want the iron and, and the, the wedge to have a little bit of pronouncing, more pronounced, more pronounced than they are in this one. 
see how I really don't have a lot to play with here. But it works, but you know. On this one, as I say, this one had a brass rod that I put through. This is just a bit of eight millimeter brass rod that I got from Mac Jing's down at uh, Sylvania or wherever he is. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't cost a lot of money. All right, now let's make the wedge. To make the wedge, we're going to use one of those pieces that we ran through the uh, thickness earlier. This is from there. Remember I said, don't worry about this piece, we're gonna clean it up. So I'm gonna cut this on the bandsaw to the width between there and there. So basically these areas here, just remember a face. This is the mouth. So if we're inside, this is the mouth of the plane. And these are the cheeks. This is the nose from the inside. And up the top, if I was to do any kind of recesses or, or tidying up, they're called the ears. So there you go. The bottom of the plane is different though. Toe, heel, sole. So if you remember a foot and if you remember a face, you should remember every part of a wooden hand plane. So I need to measure the distance, total width for the wedge. One of the other reasons I've created that area for the wedge is I don't have any Norris style adjusters. See on, on this plane here, I've got this adjuster. This is, a, this is a lateral lever adjustment. So I can make the blade do this. With this, if it was just straight and no kind of rebates there, or, or should I say dados, there would, I couldn't angle the blade at all. So that's the other reason they're there. So I'm gonna measure that and cut this to just a little bit wider and then dress it up on the, uh, with the hand plane here. Don't keep talking about it, Dave, just do it. 18 minutes left. That's gotta be 45, so I'll do 46. Which means I do have to lift this up. That will do. 46, come in a little bit further. I think that is fine there. I'll do a quick check with this because different blades are going to take out different amounts. Yeah, 46 is fine there. All right. Go to the next one. Um, this one. All right. A little bit more noise. Don't forget the piece of wood, David. Check that, and that's working perfectly. Just there. You can see, I'm gonna, it's got enough room for me to hit it with a plane, which is what I'll do now. It's going that direction, I think. Move that, take that out. Gotcha. Use my old faithful again. How's that looking for fit? Just a little bit more. Don't really need them on for it.
Look at this. I love it. I love it. It's, it's dangerous. This is a bug. Don't get cooked. Don't catch it. Where is it? Just here. Yeah. Nearly. I put it in the wrong way around, didn't I? Doesn't matter. That's got to be it, hasn't it? Yes, it fits. It fits perfectly. Both ends. Not quite, but it's close. Um, we can tidy that part up. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do seven degrees. How am I going to do that? I'm going to use what I've already made as a guide. It all makes sense when you just stop and have a think. Or you watch me go like an idiot on the show and do it. Pop that down there. Okay, Carl Cam, I think is going to be the best one for this. All right, so here we have my seven degrees. So I'm going to simply put that there and there and mark there where seven degrees is and then there. So I have a point here and I have a point here. Join it. Like so. I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and cut that. Again, I can move the guard out of the sorry, the, the fence out of the way. And I'm going to lower this down. I don't like to have all the way up there if it doesn't need to be. Keep yourself safe. What have we got left? 13 minutes. Here we go. Beautiful. This is my wedge, not the offcut. Next thing to do. Put on the sander. This, the reason I've got all this length here is so I can hold it. I don't want to be touching down here and lose the, the fingerprints. Might be safe if I'd been naughty, but you know. <laughs> here we go. Look at that dust extractor. What do you think? I need to work this side a little bit more. It's nearly there. I just want that to be square. Too far. That's good enough for me. back to the Patreon camp. Are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying what it's, am I demystifying anything for you? All right, now how we check that is we actually slide it in and that's rubbish. I need to take more off the tip. I'll show you why. See that, look at that gap. That's no good. Look at that movement. So I need to take more off this end. We'll go back over to that machine and I'll take this with me so I've got a ready reference. Hmm. 
Mm, okay. I'll read all those comments later on. Back over here. Start her up again. I've got that sitting there waiting. direction. That's okay. Nearly. This is a 60 grit belt and uh, it's worthwhile. Touch more. Got it. Okay. Now I'm happy. Happy with that. See that? I can shove it in there and it holds onto it. You know that's a good fit when, it ha when that happens. Uh, there's a whole other conversation happening there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try it in here. That's good. Okay. Now, just need to take a little bit more off there, but I'll do that in a minute. Actually, I'll do it now. I use the smoother. Told you they'd all get a run. Oh, that's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, now I need to put a blade in it. I'm going to use this blade that's in this one. And for those of you that don't know how to take that out of there, use a hammer or I'm going to use a mallet. This is my little hammer that I use for blade adjustment, but I'll use the mallet on the end here. So inside, because we've got that brass point here, the brass rod, the cap, iron lever cap, whatever you want to call it, the, the wedge it i'm going to put my fingers around the nose of the wedge there and hit the end of the plane and up it comes so this is the one i made out of jarrah and it's really sexy i like it but we're making one out of scrap out of the pallet wood so we're going to continue on with that move that down there this is the blade now this is going to be a beveled down plane the reason being my blade rest in the plane is 45 degrees. When I've got a bevel down plane, that means the blade rest angle is going to be the angle. So I'm a little bit low, it's 45 degrees. If I was to turn it bevel up, well, there's another 20 degrees on there. So it'd be 65 degrees, which is lifting the blade, which can have its own purpose, but I like to have the blades down lower. I find I get a nice clean cut. So. Um, I'm going to have that in that direction, which is fine. Now, I don't really have a lot of area in the mouth there once the blade is in. So I need to take more off the base. And I'm going to do that over on the jointer because it's got to, I've got to do it quickly. To do that, I'm just going to lower this down. Give me a second. back right 
So this is going to make sure that I'm going to work square off the right hand side because I'm right handed. I push with the right hand and hold the front down with my left hand. If you're the other way around, you might want to make sure that this side is the point, your reference point for squaring the base. They should be square all the way around, but you know, if you stuff up, yeah, it'll work. So I'm going to push this side against the fence on the jointer and go over and that will open the mouth up because remember this is at 45 degrees. So every millimeter I take off the bottom is going to open the mouth up one millimeter plus whatever's in the escapement, which is very shallow. So we'll just hit that. Give me a sec. Now that's, that's one millimeter I've taken off. I'm going to put the blade in to see how much we've got there for shavings to come out. I'm going to go, I'm going to go one more. Now, if your machines suffer from sniper tool, make the plane longer by about four inches. So every time you process it, at this stage, that little bit of snipe on the, I don't have snipe on my machine because I tuned it and I'm a bit of a smart ass. So, so I don't have that issue. Uh, I did with some of my earlier machines. Now that's pretty good. That's great as a matter of fact. So you can see that's the size mouth with the blade in there. The mouth on the other one that I made is bigger. We're nearly there, guys. See that? This one was much bigger. No good. All right. So the next thing I want to do is put this in and then put the wedge in so I know what length to cut the wedge to. Wherever I put it, right here. Because I don't want it that long. It's going to stick out the end. So let me put it in there without all the rest of the stuff. Put the blade in. See how it's hanging out the end there? I need to cut that much off to start. So I will cut off about this much. Drop it down again. I forgot. Got about four minutes left. Okay. So there's the wedge. Notice I haven't cut the length off it at all on the other side, my handle part. Drop that down in there, that one in there. And it still needs to have a bit more taken off it. See that? It's just starting to show at the end and it's pushing up tight now. So I'm going to take another, I'm going to take another 10 millimeters off it. Give me a sec. Now we'll put this in again. Oh, that's lovely. See, the wedge is staying back from the base. Now, the length of the wedge I'm going to make to accommodate the plane blade. Now, I want the wedge to be slightly lower. I want it to be around about half an inch lower, maybe a little bit more than the, the blade itself. I'll come around here, I'll show you nice and close. So there's the blade. I want to come down to about here for the wedge. All right. That means I've got plenty to grab the blade by and plenty to grab the wedge by when I need to pull it apart. I cut this off. And that my friend, is the perfect size wedge. Now let's make it a little bit sexy. I'm going to round the corners a little bit and then just give them a nice tidy up on all of the sides so then it's nice to touch. I don't want to take anything off these parts down here because they're the ones that are going to push up inside of the, we the wedge catchment area. What are we going to call it? In the, in the cheek area. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll switch the cameras so and you watch. I think.
All righty. Yep, back here again. Um, this I'm going to do on the disc sander. So flip this up, spin it around a little bit so you can see it a bit easier. Drop him down, move the dust extraction from there around and to the disc sander itself. There we go. All right, everything's clear. I'm not touching anything with the belt. Um, that way, which means I want to create a little wedge there. And yeah. And I want to use that for a second. I've kind of stuffed myself up there, haven't I? It's okay. Spin this around again. I should make a double collection port on this machine. Then I wouldn't have to worry about doing this kind of stuff. Good. I'm going to create, I'm going to create these little finger pulls right here. Do that. Another one. You just be careful that the thing doesn't grab you. Give the belt sander a lot of respect. Maybe as much as you give a router table. It's all freeform. You can do it with a drill and be really kind of good, or I can do it with a bobbin sander or a single sander, I should say. Um, but I find this is nice. There it is. Cool. And put this part. Give a little bit of a round there. That'll do me. Okay, we're nearly there. So, one last thing to do is we're going to dock the ends, both ends, and then we're going to give it some rounding so it's comfortable to touch, and we're going to create a little bit of a dip in there. This is going, I know we've gone past the hour, we're going to be about another five to ten minutes. Stick with me if you want to watch. Okay, bandsaw. Yep, that's all good. Dock the ends first. How cute is it looking? Look at that. That's after it's been docked and it's starting to look more like a hand plane, isn't it? Yep. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I just had, I had a moment then. I thought I built it as a Japanese plane, but no, that would have been down here. Anyway. Um, okay. Bandsaw. Bandsaw, bandsaw. There we go. And I'll wear these. Doesn't hurt. We're going to take the corners off.
basically a 45. This is just reducing the amount that I have to sand. Um, and we'll take the top off there. And also there. This way. Not too much there. Um, yeah, that'll do us on that. Then we'll come back over to this guy. Sorry, it's caught on a hose there. That's all good. So we'll do a bit of shaping here. I'm going to do this one. Actually, <clears throat> let me pull this through a little. And you can see it from the side. Might be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to create an area here. See that? We'll go work a bit harder towards the um, towards the nose. That's looking pretty cool. Now we'll go around to the up on the disc. It's pretty cool, doesn't it? And we'll do it here as well. And on the front. And here. That's all looking cool. Um, the rest, I'm going to do with a hand pump. Okay. There we go. That's what it's looking like so far. We'll give it a quick touch with which plane shall we use i'll use this one so it's friendly to touch there we go put the blade in and the wedge so when I put the blade in, I put it down so that it's touching the timber underneath. So that's setting the base. This is on my bench. So I'm going to get the wedge and slide it in. Like so. Give it a little tap. And what do you think of that? And we haven't finished yet. We need to give it a try. That's got a fair bit of bite. So I'm going to um, pull the blade back up just a touch before I put the wedge in. That's better. Now a piece of timber in here for me to work on. And I'll show you how I get the adjustment right. Because if you don't get the adjustment right, it's going to dig in. It's very hard to adjust these things you know, just by eye. So I start off by eye to get it close. And then 
I give it a little bit of a run, a couple of taps, and I do it this way. She's grabbing now. Now I need to check for the angle of it. It's, it's over this way a little bit. I need to sneak it back. So a little tap there and it will want to come back down again. Okay. A little bit more. Look at that. What do you think? Now, total cost. Uh, I scrounged some wood. Machines in the shop. Yeah, I use them all the time. So let's forget that. I used a hand plane for part of it. I could have used a rasp for around the corners here and sandpaper. Easy, take longer, that's all. Um, yeah, we haven't finished yet. Let's, I'm, I'm gonna take it out. Give me a second. Ah. Let's give it some oil, why not? I think I've got some here. This is that interbuild oil that I was talking about that I did the, uh, the Cypress table with. 10 past, I'll tell you what, that's not bad. Make it look really pretty, hey? And I have one more trick to show you. Oh, I've nearly finished doing a video as well on TSO's uh, MTR18 triangle. This is, this is a new package that they've come out with. It's all the gear, but they've done a Kazon foam insert for, for all the stuff that goes inside it. And it's, it's pretty sexy. And they're, they even sell a sustainer. It doesn't come with the kit. You have to buy that separately. What a shame. Anyway, it's this color. How cool is that? So I've got links, links in the description box down the bottom for all of the stuff that I do and uh, for the companies that I think are really worthwhile. You know, nice gear. Now, whilst I've given that a little bit of oil on the bottom, I'm going to do something else to it as well. And one of the reasons my planes are all working so well now as well is due to what I'm going to show you. A little bit of oil actually helps with the wedge going in and coming out again. There we go. Lovely. Now remember this is exothermic. Don't leave rags lying around. Bunched up, I leave mine in the sink or in, in water. Here we go. The humble candle. See this? Arthur used this on all of his tools. You rub it, just rub a candle, backwards and forwards over stuff, and it makes such a difference. In performance, I'm going to give this one a quick rub with the candle as well, even though the oil probably <laughs> won't, won't let me do that. You'd obviously let the oil dry out first before you uh, put the plane back together, but I'm going to do it just because we've got a show happening. Where's my little mallet? The other thing I was thinking, maybe I should build a little uh, plain hammer as well. But you know, that little Japanese hammer that I've got does a pretty good job. 
They are harder to set up than a conventional hand plane, but it's worth it. Let's see how it goes. There was a fair bite in that one. Let's go again. It needs adjusting down, but there we go. That's the project. Remember what it was at the beginning of the show? It was just a chunk of this. And you see how easy it is to do. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, as I say, down in the description box, links, Patreon, all that kind of stuff. If you want the gear that I've got, um, I'm just trying to sound like a salesman, but if you know, if you're in Australia and you want the stuff that I get, I've got links down there as to where I got my stuff. Um, Patreon meeting right after the show. Give me about two minutes and we'll kick that off. Okay, see you later. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. See you next week.